Hi, welcome back. Recently I had a bit of an epiphany. Uh, I've been using Nikon cameras probably for the best part of 25 years now, ever since I started in my career. And I've been finding that I've, my photography in particular has been getting more and more frustrating recently. Uh, it was time for a change. They were cameras were getting bigger, they were getting heavier, they were getting a lot more expensive and I don't honestly feel that I was getting the results that I was actually looking for uh, from what I was using. Uh, partially probably down to the way I actually shoot, there is nothing wrong with Nikon cameras, they produce excellent results, there's no doubt about it, but I was getting a bit fed up with the arms race between Canon and Nikon, it happens all the time. So I decided it was time for a change. I looked about a bit and decided I wanted to go down the middle of this route. Now, there were two or three options in this, obviously. I have the Panasonics, there's the Sonys, and there's the Fujis. Now, Panasonic make excellent cameras. Uh, they've made the electronics for Leicas for years. Uh, they're very, very good at what they do. Their video cameras for a long time were some of the best on the market, and very probably still are. It's not something I buy a lot of, so it's not something I'm particularly clued up on. Sonys, well, Sonys have never really worked for me. Uh, I've always found them particularly confusing through the operating system. They do produce excellent results, there's no doubt about it. But it wasn't something I wanted to look at. Uh, I originally thought maybe I should look at the new Canon cameras, but uh, it looked as though I would end up going down the whole heavy SLR route again, and that wasn't something I wanted to look at either, which kind of left me with Fuji. Now, I spoke to a few friends who are actually Fuji users, and they've been really, really pleased with what the, the results they've actually got from them. So, I started looking around. Now, obviously, to switch an entire camera system when uh, you've got an investment in lenses and bodies and so on and so on is quite a bit of money. Uh, so, I decided the best thing I really wanted to do was to look at the lenses first. So, that's what I did. I narrowed it down to the fact that I wanted to start with a standard kind of zoom, a reasonably fast one, uh, which is fine. Uh, possibly with another couple of lenses, uh, somewhere up around the 200mm mark for uh, long range stuff, and all the way down to about 10mm, uh, given the fact that uh, mirrorless cameras tend to work on an APS-C size for, uh, format as opposed to full frame. Uh, that would give me approximately sort of 12 to 14 mil, depending on the brand of camera I'd gone for. No. Then you come down to which camera body I was looking at. Now, they're all due to change yet again. The X-T3 was announced last year. Uh, I was looking at rangefinders more than anything else. So I couldn't tell you why. I've just always wanted a rangefinder camera. And the more I looked into it, the more I realised for landscape photography in particular, it was going to be a rangefinder, really, that I actually wanted to go for. So, there are two around at the moment. Uh, there's the X-Pro2 and there's a medium format version. Now, the medium format was going to get towards the, the heavy camera again, which is something I didn't want to do. So I started looking at the X-Pro2. Then I realized the X-Pro3 is due to be released sometime very, very soon as well. So I don't particularly want to pay out money for an X-Pro2, even a decent second-hand one, and then suddenly find it's worth a fraction of what I actually paid for it because the uh, X-Pro3 has been released. I would rather actually put my money into the lenses and get a basic camera body to start with and let it grow from there. So I ended up with this. Now this is a good quality X Pro 1. I bought the camera body itself from Wex. Uh, excellent service, absolutely superb. I won't hear a word head against them. Uh, I literally phoned them up, asked them a few questions about it when I saw the advert, paid for it that day and it was here by 10 o'clock the following morning. Can't go fair on that really, can you? The lens I brought from MPB, there was a few more problems there. It's an 18 to 55 mil zoom, superb quality once again, uh, said it does exactly what it says in the tin, uh, arrived with the hood and everything else I actually wanted. No problem at all there. It took a while longer to get here. I ordered it on the Friday. I was hoping to actually have it in my hands by, say, Tuesday, and it ended up being late on Wednesday afternoon by the time I finally got it. There were a few problems ordering from the website. I think that's more down to my internet connection here and uh, the fact that I happened to just hit the cutoff point for uh, the early delivery and they don't work over weekends unlike other companies, so that was that. But it handles extremely well. I've got a couple of accessories I've actually put onto it. One is this little thumb bracket which fits into the hot shoe, you can probably see just there on the top, just fits in like so. Because it's quite a smooth body camera, you can see my thumb fits in quite nicely there. 
Uh, and also there's this grip. Now the grip itself forms an L plate that goes right around the bottom and right up the side there. That allows me to use an Arca Swiss unit on the top of a uh, tripod so I can have a, have a camera sat like so or like so without having to cant the head over. I found that to be incredibly useful in the past and it just beefs the camera up a bit. The camera body itself is actually quite smooth. Uh, so it just makes it slightly easier to hold. I don't often shoot handheld, but when you're in mounting kind of environments, the more grip you've actually got on something, the better for all concerned. The camera in itself is really solid. It's metal bodied. It's uh, the basic framework is anyway. The controls, as you can see in the top there, it has traditional shutter dials. There's your exposure compensation. Aperture is controlled by revolving the, the uh, wheel on the lens. Uh, you can control focus and zoom that way as well. Uh, the rangefinder is there. It's a hybrid viewfinder. Now that's something that sold me on the Fujis originally as well. I do like optical viewfinders. However, being able to have almost a heads-up display actually appearing in the viewfinder is absolutely fantastic. Now, one of the things about this is, of course, picking it up in the shop or picking up someone else's or pick, even picking up one that you've just bought is one thing. Actually going out and using it in the field is another matter altogether. We've not had much of a summer at all. Uh, autumn is now actually coming in and we're getting a few nice sunsets. So the other night I thought I'll head out to Lytham St Anne's, which is a local beach, wander down to the salt marsh and see if I can get one or two nice shots, maybe find some decent compositions, put it through its paces, try a few different settings and what have you, and basically see what I can come up with. Well, here we are at Lytham St Anne's tonight. It's not quite as nice as I hoped it was going to be. As you can see, there's not an awful lot of light in the sky. It's kind of dull and clouded over. However, we're going to head up towards where I can see these boat masts and we'll have a look because you never know, it's not sunset yet, so it might brighten up just a little bit. Sometimes these kind of nights you get more colour coming out of the sky than you expect. We'll go, we'll see if we can find a composition and we'll see how it goes from there. Fall over my dog and we shall see. And this, folks, is why you wear wellies. Am I scared of you, honey? I don't think so. But I can't stop shaking Am I in love with you, babe? I don't think so But I don't really know How the heart works anyway But all the times we've had You felt so good to me And all Ways you touch and feel so good. Won't you stay with me for a little while longer, babe? Stay with me tonight. And when you leave in the morning, would you come back quicker than you've gone? Stay with me for a while. If I told you everything I think I want to say when you're around Would it be a lie to you, babe, tell you I want you If I can't follow through, I don't know what to say Except all the times we've had felt so good to me so good Won't you stay with me 
we'll give it a try and we'll see what happens. So I'm quite pleased with the way the camera actually handles. Uh, it's very, very easy to set up in the field. It does occasionally have a little couple of hissy fits about the uh, vertical horizon, probably because of the filter in the front. But we'll get that sorted, we'll get used to it. Okay, now it's just a matter of waiting and uh, we'll see what the light does. Well, after waiting around for nearly two hours, just as the light went down, and I got this, made the whole evening worthwhile. Well, that's all for now, folks. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.